Hello, I'm Ralph from Victaulic. Today I want to talk to you about a new feature that we have for Victaulic Tools for Revit called Flip to Vic. We've had a lot of customers ask us, how do we take a generic model and convert it to Victaulic pieces and parts? In Revit, there's a functionality called pipe types, and the changing of pipe types will allow you to change those routes. But as anybody has ever used that functionality, you'll know that there's a lot of limitations and a lot of issues when you do those conversions. So what I want to do is I want to actually show you a couple different scenarios of what the out-of-the-box Revit would do, and then we'll, we'll go into how our new tool Flip to Vic what would handle those same situations. So I have a configuration here, just represents you know some different piping connections t's with caps t's with reducers you know fitting to fitting connections tight bends accessories valves and strainers so a couple things you know co some common things that you'd want to convert uh, from a generic model to a you know manufacturer specific model so i'm going to just window select this and i'll show you the revit workflow the standard revit workflow would be change type so if I come up here and I, I go to change type, you'll see I only have three different pipe types loaded. I don't even have the one I want. Um, but in this case, I'll just try it with chilled water. And instantly we'll see that there's an error message, which isn't the biggest issue. Uh, really, the biggest issue is you can see the disconnects that all just showed up. Here, you know, for some reason, there was an additional elbow and reducer put in and that T was deleted. So now that line isn't consistent. In here, you can see the T and reducer was deleted and the valve was disconnected. Um, here, it, it broke at this double, at this uh, offset or this drop. And then from there on out, the piping just failed. So you can see there'd be a good bit of rework. And really, this just illustrates a small part of a larger project. Uh, we see a lot of engineers' models that are super detailed nowadays. And there's tons of fitting to fitting connections in there. And it really, you know, when you want to take that model from a generic model, which is traditionally used to a, a manufacturer specific Victaulic groove model, there can be a lot of work involved. So our new Flip to Vic tool will help you help eliminate a lot of that time and effort required to do that. So I'm just going to undo. And what I'm going to do here is I can window select the piping. When I click on, you'll see up in the modify ribbon, you'll see there's a, a new option available in the new build called flip to Vic. So I'm gonna click on that. You can see a window pops up. Now I have the ability to select, let's say the standard pipe type, but it's already modeled in standard. So if I wanna load any Victaulic pipe types, we've loaded the common ones within Victaulic tools for Revit. They'll be instantly available for you uh, to automatically load into your project. So in this case, I want to load two of them. Um, so if I'm doing a carbon steel system, we traditionally, a Victaulic here, we call that an IPS system. And that's the way we have our content broke, broken down. So for Revit, Revit has an issue in the way you route that, you know, if you want to tap coming off a branch or a T, there's no way to create a single pipe type, which is similar to a specification in Revit, um, to route either T's or taps based on size. You, you have to select the T or tap pipe type as you do this. And uh, that's the reason, main reason why you'll see in this drop down here that we have our pipe types broken down via T versus tap. Just know that what you typically want to do is you, if you're doing a carbon steel system, you're going to want to load the Victaulic IPST and I'll click load, you'll notice that this load takes a few moments. So what it's doing is it's programmatically building that pipe type in Revit. If there's families in this project that are within that pipe type, it uses those families for that pipe type. It doesn't load additional families in the projects, in the project, and it doesn't rename the content either. So if you've copied pipe from one project to the other, and maybe there was already piping that was similar of the same pipe type in there, you'll notice that sometimes your pipe types get messed up or in your project browser, you'll see a lot of additional families that really don't belong. So you can see in here, I loaded the IPST pipe type. I'll do the same thing and I'll load the uh, IPS tap pipe type. 
So just that easy. In the project, I loaded two pipe types. Now I can select, in this case, I'll select the IPST. And in generally, I do recommend most people um, take the model and convert it to T. If there's areas that you want tap, then you can select the tap pipe type later. The way flip to vic works is it wants to keep the piping in the same location it, it's in. So we made some rules that when it does the conversion, uh, any pipes that are there, it's going to keep those center lines. It's going to work really hard to keep them. So if it can't keep them because of fitting to fitting issues, what it'll do then is, is just disconnect it at that location and give you a log that you can go down through. So if I click OK here, now you can see here in the selection that I had, I had a bunch of accessories. Now I had some butterfly valves and a Y strainer. I can pick from any family within the project, but in this case, I want some. I want to switch out to Victolic valves and Victolic strainers when I do the conversion. So what I'm going to do instead of continuing with the flip, I'm going to actually click cancel. So what I could have done prior is load, but this will show you probably what's going to happen for you. So if I go to Victolic Tools, the easiest way to get content is really under Victolic Tools, under Victolic IPS, like I was talking about. I can go into Valves, and I can grab our VIC-300. GO stands for Gear Operator. So I'll grab that Gear Operated Valve. Uh, our toolbar is going to automatically load that content into Revit. I can just drop one in, so now that piece is in there. For strainers, I'm going to load the Y strainer, our 732 Y strainer. And that just takes a second and I can drop those in. Now I just needed them in the project so I can really just delete those two families. Now watch this. When I select the model and I go to flip to Vic, you'll see here I can just leave it on IPST. I can click OK. And now I have the option to come down here at the bottom and set a VIC-300 gear operator butter butterfly valve for that. I can set another gear operated butterfly valve for that. And then for the strainer, I can come down here and set the Y strainer, a 732 Y strainer. So what's nice with flip to vic is it's going to remember these selections that you have here. So the next time I come into IPS, Victolic IPST, and I want to do a flip, it's going to remember, hey, last time you saw, when you saw a pipe accessory of 4-inch, you selected a gear-operated valve. You can obviously just grab that, and it'll, it'll load it in. So I'm going to just go to proceed to flip. And now it's going to place and replace all those pieces and parts. So we did get an error message. So it looks like we actually got an error message down here at that strainer but we're just going to hit cancel and our tool's going to go past that and it's actually going to connect that up. If I tried to do that in Revit, that strainer would actually have failed. It wouldn't have even worked. Um, so a great thing with our tool is it will go past a lot of those things that Revit has a challenge with. It will actually allow to happen. So you can see here we have a disconnect. I have my disconnects turned on. A neat trick to fix this. Now I need to decide which piece of pipes at the correct elevation. So I want to keep the main elevation consistent. So if I take a look at this, this is at eight foot. This one here is at seven, seven. I'm going to make this fitting to fitting. We have a tool for that. It's called any connect. I can select this coupling, which is from the top elbow and this coupling. And you're going to see it pulls those two pieces fitting to fitting. So a lot of our other tools combined with the flip to Vic, are definitely going to speed up your, your process and your workflow. Okay, you can see here's the valve that was converted, here's the strainer. Now, a lot of times we have scenarios where, you know, maybe we don't want to use T's like this scenario here. We have a, a component, it's our number 26 outlet fitting. I can take this model, this area of the project, just window select. I can actually use flip to Vic to just change out from T's to taps that quickly. So if I want to put in our number 26 outlet fitting, I can just select that tap pipe type like I talked about before. I can say leave the valve as is because it's already Victolic. We're good to go. And a few seconds, there you go. It changed it out to our number 26 outlet fitting.
So what you could do there is you could detail that out and send it to us and we can provide you that part. So, you know, it's, a, it's always great. You know, you see it on a smaller model like this. What I want to show you, though, is really we've been using this thing across entire projects now for a little while. And it's actually been pretty impressive. Uh, would I select an entire building? Probably not. I would probably go system by system. You can do as much or as little as you want. And, you know, you really have the control up to you. But I can select multiple levels, multiple piping systems. I have mechanical equipment in this selection. And then I can come in here to flip the VIC. I can see that I want to flip it over to the T pipe type. And I can click OK. Here's all the different options. So I can come in here and specify the valves that I want for each size. Now, when we build our butterfly valves, we make them that they're lookup table based, which is a little odd for Revit. Most uh, valves you'll find that are generic out you know, from, from Autodesk are going to be type based. So just be aware, you're probably going to map all your, you may have a lot of accessories on the left here because they're based on size and you can easily just map those to probably one of our families. So it makes it super simple. So I'm going to proceed to flip. And now in a few moments, you're going to see this entire model change over. If I was doing this manually in Revit, this could really this could take anywhere to half a day, you know, at least an hour to, to convert this. If you're a suit, you know, really, if you get lucky when you do the conversions, most of the time you don't. And you get into areas where you're doing a lot of ma manual manipulation. So you do see we do have some issues. So we can click yes. And in here, what's nice is this error report gives you an idea it shows you what issues happen. So it looked like it had some issues with transitions, which is fine in a couple T's. If I want to locate any of these elements, I can do that by clicking the locate button. I can select all of them and apply some data to them, maybe something that's filterable, right? Or I could um, obviously just change their, their display or their color in this view and then go back and find them. I can isolate them in the view. I can export this data out to a CSV if I later want to go back. Uh, the CSV will include the ID of the element, so you're able to, to coordinate that and track that back. So in this case, I'm just going to go locate the one piece. And looking at this, what I can see what happened is, is this was originally a fitting to fitting connection. And it would have had to have moved something, and it didn't want to do that, so it left it alone. We have a tool called AnyConnect. I'll use the AnyConnect tool. So if I click on that coupling, select that T, select this coupling, and that T, you can see I can quickly reconnect that, get rid of those disconnects. And if I want to fix those Ts, this is another great little trick with the Flip to Vic tool. I can come in here and just set it back to that IPST pipe type. And you'll see it's going to change those T's out automatically. So, and then if I want to reconnect something, I can. It looks like we do have a disconnect here. Let's see what happened. Oh, might actually be no, it's those two. So I can just delete these and just use the any connect tool to pull those back together. So, super easy. Yeah, so I'm really hopeful that watching this video and understanding, you know, the functionality and capabilities of the Flip to Vic tool, you can see some advantages that you can have within your company by using it. Uh, I would also say if you do have questions or if you have something that comes up and you want to be able to, to work out some problems, let us know. We'd be more than happy to work with you. And I really appreciate your time and, and thank you.